What does mummy tell you you can do if people look at you? Stick your tongue down. Go on, then. You, you, can do, it to go the on you can do it to the camera. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Six years ago, we started filming Hayley O'Kines. I'm pushing my hair quickly all at the back. Hayley suffers from a rare disease called Hutchinson Guilford progeria, which ages the body more than eight times faster than normal. When we were first diagnosed with progeria, there was like no hope, no cure, bottom line, end of. We always hope that one day they would come up with a treatment or possibly a cure. One night I had a dream that as soon as I took the treatment, all of a sudden I just grew up, like a, as if I never had progeria, <sighs> as if it's magic. For the past year, we've been following Hayley and her family as this dream moves closer to reality. A treatment for progeria is being developed. But given that her body is equivalent to an old woman's, can it offer hope for Haley? The year began with the tragic reminder of the urgent need for a progeria treatment. To my best friend, I hope you had a safe journey. I love you lots and always. I miss you. I'll see you in heaven. P.S. Have fun. Love, Hayley. Oh, what photographs we got in there, look. She can take them to heaven with her. Yeah. Hayley and her family are preparing to attend the funeral of her best friend, who has died of a heart attack. She too had progeria and she was only two years older than Hayley. I know these children get labelled with this terminal illness, but it just happened so quick with no warning. Reality just give us a kick up the backside, I think, and that really sort of put things back into perspective again on what the disease is all about and what Hayley's all about. <laughs> It was, it was a big shock for, for all the family, not just Hayley. She was um, I mean, devastated, I suppose. It was like losing her sister. I mean, they used to call each other sisters. That's how close they were. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty big thing. And uh, it really hit home hard. She's like a sister to me. Um, we tell everybody that else that we are sisters. What did she think about progeria and that sort of thing? Well, she didn't really mind. She didn't really mind about it, neither did I. We just acted as if we didn't have it. I'll see you in a minute, all right? So, um, what are you going to do now, then? Um, well, I've got to get dressed, and I might be able to put some makeup on before we go. Because if she had a funeral, then she would want everybody to wear like pink and purple and bright colours instead of black. Move over. Here. Pink or purple? Purple. Okay. Hayley was so close to her friend that she has asked to say a few words at her funeral. Sleep in it. I'm going to make a speech. Um, I made a calf card for her. And I'm going to say what's in the card, only there's going to be a couple of extra words. Because our last few minutes together, because we had a sleepover um, a couple of days before she died, and um, we had a, an argument over my Nintendo DS, because she wanted to play on, her, but I, but on it, but I didn't want her to, because I wanted to play with her. And so we got in a little bit of an argument, and I never had time to say sorry to her. Oh. You are 
And Levi. Okay, is that about right? Do you want to read it through to make sure that's all alright? I love you lots and always. Sorry we had a fight. Think for me and my best friend and my sister. I miss you. See you in heaven. P.S. Have, have fun. Love, Hayley. Oh, I feel really sad and upset. But I haven't cried in the last couple of days. I've been trying to be really strong for my family too. Children deal with things better than adults. I mean, she hasn't swept it under the carpet by no means, but she deals with it in her way and she draws her pictures all the time and she says that she talks to her and she goes up to her castle in the sky with her and and she's just, she's talked about all the time. She's never forgotten. She won't be forgotten. In my dream, we was out shopping and she had a new job at the shop. She's at the counter. And I went to pay and she said, hello, Hayley. <laughs> and she said once again that I'm not really dead. So what did she look like? Did she have progeria as well? Um, well, we didn't really have progeria because um, the cure, we had the cure. And we had hair and we were tall. And we were just like an ordinary 16 year old girl. Progeria accelerates the ageing process. The average lifespan is just 13 years. At 11, Haley's friend was into her 90s in progeria years when she died. Haley is 8, equivalent to her 70s. Tragically, the death of her friend was just two months after a possible breakthrough in the treatment of the disease. Haley's friend passed away in August and we knew about the treatment in June, which also makes it difficult because we know that she's not going to be there to try the treatment. And the two girls would have done it together. They wanted to do it together. Haley's parents heard about the possible treatment at the annual Progeria reunion in the United States. Leslie Gordon from Progeria Research Foundation said that they were working on something and were very excited. So without trying to build our hopes up too much, we're getting the dialogue from the states that they're really excited about this new drug. So, um, yeah, everybody's you know, really optimistic about it. In autumn 2006, the family are told that they can expect Haley to be on the treatment by the end of the year. If true, then there will be plenty to celebrate on Haley's ninth birthday in December. In 2002, we accompanied Haley and her dad to Florida for the annual Progeria reunion. Thirty-two children, three-quarters of the world's known Progeria population, were there. In the middle of the reunion, one of the guests suddenly died. It was a sad reminder of the reality of the disease at what was supposed to be a happy event. Bereavement is something that progeria families have to prepare for. The last day before you go home, you say goodbye to everybody, you don't know who's going to be there next year. It happens every year. Um, I don't know. It's, 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 you just got to do it, you know? It's just something that you know is going to happen. You just don't know who it's going to be. You don't know what kid it's going to be. You don't know how old they're going to be. Since that reunion, many more have passed away. Seven died in one year alone. 
it is difficult when we look back at the old photographs, like especially from the first reunions and the second reunion and the third reunion. A lot of the children that were there are not there now. And I said to Mark, it just seems to be all the children that we met when we first went are not there now. Um, <clears throat> but we do actually feel quite lucky with Hayley and touch wood, nothing's happened. With children from all over the world in one place, a reunion is an invaluable opportunity to research the disease. In 2001, the Progeria Research Foundation began to take samples from children in order to build up a cell bank. This work led to the discovery of the treatment being developed in the States. The treatment offers hope that Haley's life could be longer than those of her friends. But until it is ready, medical care is in the hands of her local hospital in Hastings. What's the matter? What's the matter? She doesn't want to do blood tests. It does, you didn't even cry last time, did you? Today, Haley is seeing her paediatrician who for the past seven years has monitored the progression of her disease. She has shown the changes that you expect with this condition, that she's got the appearance of a child with progeria. So in particular, you'd notice that her nose has changed and uh, um, that the features of her face become more obvious than when she was younger. <coughs> She, quite early on, had the similar appearance as she has now with very little body fat and being very thin. So if you saw her amongst a group of her own peer children, she would stand out. Shall we lift you up? Light as a feather, aren't you? I have felt, really, that she's done extremely well over the last few years. Um, her joints have, have remained um, functionally very good, even though when you examine her, her fingers, for instance, are fixed at a certain angle. But that doesn't seem to be progressing very quickly, and she's able to use her hands very well. Do it with this hand, then. Can you get to the, the last one? No, the last one's hard, isn't it? If you're thinking about why children die when they do have progeria, it tends to be the... the um, cardiovascular problems, they have strokes or heart attacks, and we're doing our best to try and prevent that. You just don't seem to move. And you keep On a visit to the USA for tests, the first signs of possible cardiovascular problems were detected. The blood flow in an artery in Haley's neck was found to be restricted, so she was given an MRI scan. She was actually one of the first progeria children to complete an MRI and get proper results. And it was the MRI that confirmed that, yes, the blood wasn't flowing in this artery, and we was told that that could cause a stroke. Um, so they put her on synthetic statin, which um, stops the arteries from furring up. Haley has been taking the statins for the past two years. There has been no noticeable deterioration since. We do actually feel quite lucky with Haley and touch wood, nothing's happened. She's had no major heart attacks or strokes. I mean, children her age, I know one that's had four strokes. She's a very good girl, aren't you? <clears throat> bye bye then, Haley. Oh, right. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good girl. Overall, she's done remarkably well, but it is a condition where things can happen suddenly, in spite of that. And I can understand why Haley's parents are keen to try this potential treatment that's been developed in the States. Progeria is caused by a tiny mutation in a child's DNA, a defective protein called lamin A. This protein holds the nucleus of a cell together, but in progeria children, that nucleus is unstable. This instability leads to the process of premature aging. Having identified this defective protein, American researchers testing the progeria cells they had collected made an exciting discovery. 
a drug developed for cancer treatment, restored the nucleus of the cells to a normal appearance. The drug is called a farnesyl transferase inhibitor, or FTI. The um, Progera Research Foundation, when they first announced the possible benefits of this drug, told us that they had worked on mice and that their early results looked very promising. I think you cannot cry and get your present. Yeah? The sort of things that they were noticing were that there was an increased length of life, body weight was better, bone integrity, grip strength seemed to be things that were positively affected by the drugs. I even feel it. Ready? Did you feel it? There, there you go. I see, you're laughing I now, look. But of course, there is still no knowing whether those effects would be seen in children. So there's a lot of unknowns, plus not knowing what side effects might be. It's December, and Haley and her parents are in Egypt on holiday with younger brother Louis and sister Ruby. They expected to be in America by now, but they have heard nothing more about the drug trials, so they've taken this special trip to celebrate Haley's ninth birthday. We've now said that we're going to do something special for her birthday every year. We don't know how long she's going to live for, and we don't know if she's going to have the opportunity to come to places like this when she's like my age. So uh, we decide to pack as much into uh, her life at the moment as we can. Well, what's it feel like then, being nine? Fine. Feels fine, does it? <laughs> you feel a little bit older today? Yeah. Do you? Well, what's it like waking up in the morning, looking out the window, and seeing two big pyramids out there? Well, three big pyramids out there. Sure. Well, sometimes I think that we only come to special places in like Egypt and that um, only because I've got progeria. So sometimes maybe if we didn't, if I didn't have progeria, then we might not be here. But um, how does that make you feel, like about about progeria? How does that make you feel about this thing? <coughs> it makes me feel happy that I've got it. <laughs> Kiss, how are you doing? Kiss for Ruby. Despite the lack of news from America, this birthday is tinged with optimism for the first time. I never thought that a cure would be available in Haley's lifetime. With the treatment coming up, then hopefully we'll have lots of years and lots of birthdays to celebrate. But it's a cautious optimism. They are all aware that in volunteering for human trials of a drug, they are taking a huge leap of faith. At the end of the day, this treatment's been tested on progeria mice and has been tested in cells in petri dishes, but not on children. Um, so I still feel that she's going to be like a guinea pig and, and she said to me that perhaps she'd like to wait a year before doing the treatment. With so few children available for trials, with their lives so short, and in the interests of fairness to all, waiting for others to go first is not an option. Haley spoke to Kerry about uh, maybe wanting to hold off and uh, see what happens, see if there's any side effects that comes from the treatment. But um, we've been told that it's not possible. We've got to have all the kids on the treatment within six months. It's still uh, a little bit scary. We're sort of Nervously excited, I think, would be the best way to put it. There's 15 kids, I believe, on the course, and they've got to get them all over to the um, USA to do it. It can't be done in any other countries. It's got to be done in Boston. We were expecting that possibly we'd have to be going out to Boston before the end of this year. Um, it still is a possibility. I mean, they could ring us up when we get back home and say, come out at the end of the week. As far as the treatment's concerned, then yes, we will be. I mean, I'd travel tomorrow if I had to.
And one night I had a dream that as soon as I took the treatment, all of a sudden I just grew up, like a, as if I never had progeria, <sighs> as if it's magic. Hayley becomes more self-conscious of her appearance with every year. And in Egypt, she attracts attention wherever she goes. In England, I think a lot of people actually recognise her from sort of being on telly and in magazines. And out here, I don't think they've ever seen a progeria child before. So she's, yeah, she's had a lot of people stare and I've seen a lot of people running up and getting their friends and coming back and having a look and... I don't think it's bothered her at all. If it would have bothered her, she would have said to me, and she hasn't, so. How are you? How are you? Well, when we went to the pyramids earlier, um, there was, like, a group of girls that all, all wanted to say hello to me and, like, have pictures of me and everything. How does that make you feel? Special. <laughs> Hayley. Hayley. Hayley's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just say to myself, um, no, no, I kids are only, like, smaller. <laughs> Here. Oh, OK, we're here. We're up. Right. in a minute, all right? OK. Louis. <laughs> Get through into that one. Off, mate. <laughs> it's been really cool. <laughs> what what have you found the best thing in Egypt? Uh, going to the pyramids for my birthday. <laughs> No news is good news, but not for Haley and her family. We've been waiting for a while now, and we just want to get on with it. Waiting to hear from America is getting more and more stressful. We're now in the middle of April and still haven't heard anything about the treatment. I mean, we were told last June that this treatment was available and we was told that it should be available in December. Um, December's been and gone, January and February and March been and gone. Um, we haven't had any news from PRF. Uh, the only news that we've had is that it will be very soon. It's really awkward at the moment because we can't really plan anything too far ahead because we know that what, you know, they could ring up one day and we should be flying out to America the next day, so we can't really talk, plan too much ahead in the future for anything. Um, until we know when the first one is, because then we can, you know, like we know we're going to be going over there every three months after that. But um, it's like life's on hold at the moment. Right. The drug trials are shrouded in secrecy. Mark and Kerry know nothing more about it than they did in the autumn. I've started worrying about maybe something's gone wrong, or they found some sort of problem with the drug, or. Something like that, I'm sure there hasn't, but um, because we're not getting much feedback, I mean, you, you start thinking about all sorts of different things. I mean, how do you feel about it? Apart from excited, do you feel nervous at all? Or what? Yeah, I feel really nervous. Why is that? Because if something happens, they won't be able to stop it. There's a little voice in my head saying that time's ticking away and... Um, and I just want things going. I just want things to start and see what's going to happen. The trials are awaiting government approval from the American Federal Drugs Agency. The machinery of government moves slowly, but progeria doesn't. Time is not on Haley's side.
Haley's palliative care nurse and play therapist is visiting. Hello, come in. Haley's hiding, she doesn't want to see you today. <laughs> Jane Streeter is a friend, confidant and counsellor. Over the past few months, Jane has been helping Haley to deal with the grief of losing her best friend to progeria. She's been able to work through this bereavement very positively and she's clearly put her in this beautiful place, a pink castle where she has got hair now, she can dress, dress up in beautiful things. Hayley feels that she can go and visit her in her dreams and it's all a positive outlook on where she feels her friend is and I think part of my role is to try and support the family in that outlook that she's got because it works for her and she's comfortable in that and I think she is able to put herself in that position that that's potentially what might happen to her and that she'd join her friend. It's tough for me too. There you go. Guess what, Mum? Woo! We've got yellow paint down our trousers. Not a problem. Here's a cloth. <laughs> Hello. Jane was very helpful, and sometimes I almost feel like I'm passing the buck to Jane. The situations that I don't feel comfortable in talking around death and, and the dying and what Hayley would like at her funeral and things, I sort of try and pass the buck almost to Jane. Okay. You stay here with Mummy, Chloe, and then... No, you're not going in there with Jane and Hayley, because that's their time. Jane's there as a support to Hayley, which is uh, one thing that we do need from time to time, because it's quite difficult for Hayley to open up to us, as it would be for any kid, um, you know, about, about some things, about how she's feeling and that. So it's, uh, Jane's yeah, quite, still quite an important part in Hayley's life. Blob it all over. <laughs> I think she knows everything about Perduria. I think she knows life expectancy. She knows what they think is going to be happening to her. She's old enough to know that now. We've never hidden anything from her. There's it, no point trying to hide it from her anymore because she, you know, she's at that age where she's, she, although she still looks little and sometimes people forget that, but she can find out her own things and especially after her friend died as well, which is like, you know, she, she wanted to know a lot more about it then. A messy, large, beautiful heart. What do you think? <laughs> we know that she's frightened of upsetting Kerry and myself by talking about Bajuria, so... That's, you know, that's why it's obviously important that she has got somewhere else to, you know, to outlet her anxiousness and frustrations and questions and stuff like that. Contact lens. She's very protective of Kerry and Mark, um, and I think potentially they're probably one of the last people uh, that she would choose to have an open conversation about the consequences of her condition, because she knows how much emotional upset it causes them when they do talk about it, because she overhears conversations and she sees a lot. It is, and Jane's main concern today is the impending visit of a Japanese TV crew. But who did we take there last time? Is it them film people? Who were they? Do you remember them? Japanese people. Japanese people. Hello. Hiya. Hello. Hi, Hi, Mark O'Kainz-san and Kerry-san. Two years ago, Hayley featured in a sensitive portrayal called Precious Life. Like us, the documentary makers wish to follow up her story. Haney has told her parents she is willing to star again. But in private, she's not too keen. Are they going to come be coming again soon? Yeah. <gasps> Is that exciting? Not really. What does that mean then? Don't you feel really feel like to do it? Is it the filming you don't like? They're bossy. They're bossy. Are they different? Part of our role is when you see a circumstances or family are asking for you know advice or support is that you're devil's advocate sometimes. You show them the other side of the coin. And um, sometimes my role is to advocate for Hayley uh, and inform her parents of things that I think that she's uncomfortable with but she's unable to express that to her parents. Hayley's really on good form at the moment. She seems She's all right, quiet. is she? Yeah, she <coughs> seems quiet. Did you manage to speak to her about the Japanese... Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I think that's something you need to revisit with her, definitely, and have a little chat. I think she's a little bit, I've got to be on, honest, negative. OK. Because um, we did ask her about doing the filming with the Japanese and she was quite... 
quite quite keen to do it. She sounded quite keen to do mm. it. But then I was just a bit worried that, like you said, that she was trying to do it to please us. She's quite likely to say something different to you, and being her parent, she's going to want to please you. Thank you, guys. Welcome back. Now, next guest is Mark and Kerry, so their daughter Hayley is a true inspiration. Since Hayley was diagnosed, she has made frequent television appearances. Instead of shielding her from the public gaze, her parents decided to do exactly the opposite. We knew that nobody knew anything about Progeria. I mean, how different Hayley was going to look. And um, because of that, we said we'd get out in the media and we're going to tell everybody about it. I mean, that was the worst thing about it at the beginning, was not knowing anything about it. None of our family and friends or neighbours or anybody knew about Progeria. Yeah, it's about 40. 40 moment, people yeah. in the whole world. Yeah. I mean, you are very special then in that yeah. case, aren't you? Having set out to raise Progeria awareness, the family discovered another benefit of the publicity for Haley. Anywhere we've travelled to America and across Europe, we know that either when we get to the airport or when we get to where we're going, we know that somebody's going to recognise Haley and, and recognise her from the TV or, or newspapers or something and come up to her and, and you know ask how she's doing rather than stare at her and sort of think or wonder, you know, come to their own sort of conclusion about, about what's happening with her. So, uh, yeah, it's great. We like that. She likes that as well. Haley's concern about the Japanese documentary was that it was tiring, as they only had a short space of time in which to film. So Kerry and Mark have reached an agreement with them. This time, the filming will be much less intense. This one actually seemed to go a lot smoother. I think we'd worked out each other's boundaries and, and what we could do and say and things like that. And it was also nice to see that Hayley was more comfortable. <laughs> the family felt that it was their role and a part of their way to help them cope with this um, awful situation was that they wanted to let the world know about Progeria. Mm. And that's been a positive thing for them and that's been a part of a therapeutic process for them that they feel they're achieving something positive out of Hayley's life. It was uh, nice to know that we sort of stretched out to uh, another part of the world, if you like, with, um, you know, raising awareness for Progeria. I'm sure there must be some kids, or at least one or two kids, out in Japan, um, or maybe away from the cities, that it must be a kid with Progeria out there. And if there is one, and they, uh, you know, they find them because of the programme that we've done out there and raising awareness for Progeria, then it's all worthwhile. <laughs> The Okines are playing host to another Progeria family from Belgium, who first heard about the condition from a television programme. It's an event Hayley wanted to film herself. Um, well, we're here at the train station, Euro Star, and we're waiting for um, my friend Miguel to come and his family. Hello. Hi. The Okines first met the Vanderweets at the annual Progeria reunion. Hello, Haley. Hello. Haley's friend Mikil is a year younger than her. His younger sister Amber is 15 months old. <laughs> and it's very important to meet other families. And uh, last year in Philadelphia, when we were at the reunion over there, we said that we would come together, or we would come to their place or there to our place. So uh, it's good to know people like them because they have the same feelings. Huh? The Vanderweets are staying in a seaside B&B in Haley's hometown of Bex Hill. They were initially unaware that their son had progeria. 
when Mikhail began to exhibit problems, he was misdiagnosed with another condition. But his parents began to doubt that diagnosis as his appearance began to change. That's uh, when we started asking the doctor in Brussels, isn't it something else? And they said, no, 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 it's the same. Uh, you're just a little bit worried. It's, it's done. Don't ask too much question. But uh, when he, he became four, he looked a lot different. Our doctor at our hometown told us to look at a program on television about progeria. And then after the program, me and my wife looked at each other and was saying, that's just Michiel. He looked the same as the girl on, on the program. When Mikhail was misdiagnosed, his parents were told there was a 25% chance of having another child with the same condition. This was too high a chance for his dad, who opted to have a vasectomy. But the new diagnosis changed his mind on having another child. When they told us that it was progeria and you just have chance one out of eight million, we wanted to be sure it was going to be like that. So we asked the doctors in, in Holland, in Belgium, in, uh, in the States, and they were all saying, no, it's, it won't happen again. Never, never happened before. So you can uh, go for the second one. It, it will be safe. It will be, will be OK. Given the odds stated by doctors of one in eight million, Wim had an operation to reverse the vasectomy. In June 2005, his wife, Godliva, became pregnant for a second time. We were so happy that she was pregnant again. And when my wife gave birth to Amber, uh, a doctor was also there to be sure that everything was okay. And she said, everything is okay. She looked different, than, she's different than uh, Michiel. Uh, her skin is different, she has more hair, she's, she has more weight, so I'm sure about that. A week after she was born, Amber fell ill. <laughs> Despite the assurances from doctors, Wim wanted to rule out progeria. He asked for his daughter to be tested. They did the test and we went to Antwerp for the results. When we came in, uh, the doctors were sitting there. They looked very sad. They said, sit down, we have some bad news to tell you. Stop, stop, stop. Against all the odds, Amber, too, had progeria. We never won the lottery, but we win this twice, so... We can't understand it, you can't believe it. Doctors believe that the van der Wiet's situation is a remarkable chance occurrence. It is thought that both could be carrying defective cells, although these cells have not been identified. They have been told that their chance of conceiving another progeria child is one in two. For everyone else, it remains one in eight million. Kerry gave birth to two healthy babies after Haley. I didn't want to, when Hayley passes away, to be left with no children. So it was always quite a conscious decision to have more children um, after Hayley was diagnosed. But I think it's nice for her to have brothers and sisters as well and not be an only child. Mark and Gary have healthy children. It will be hard when it happened with Hayley. I'm sure about that. But they still have two healthy children. They have to take care of them too. So they have to think about the good moments they had with, uh, with, uh, with Haley, And I think there are a lot of good moments. <laughs> but at our family, if Michiel is not there anymore, you know what it feels to lose a child. And then you know what's going to happen with Amber too. It will normally will be the same, or they have to find a cure for it. Like Mark and Kerry, the Van der Wiets are placing their hopes in the treatment being developed in the States. 
Mikhail is also signed up for the trials, so they too have been anxiously waiting for news. But that evening, their wait finally comes to an end. Mm. You've probably guessed already, haven't you? Because you always guess, don't you? Yeah, what? Let me know. We've got a call from Leslie mm. about the treatment. Mm. OK, do you want to know when we're going? Mm. 3rd of June. That's in three... No, how many? Four weeks. Three, three four weeks. Like <laughs> it's the day, day after Ruby's birthday. Yay! Right. This is the start of a new chapter in the lives of the two families. From now on, they will be progeria pioneers, journeying to America every 16 weeks to undergo a highly secretive program of treatment. What only six years ago seemed like an impossible dream is now much closer to reality. Okines are entertaining the Vanderweeds, a family from Belgium who, like them, will take part in trials of the new progeria treatment. <laughs> Today, Haley's grandparents have joined them for a trip through the Sussex countryside on a preserved railway. Yeah, you all right? Oh, honey! When we last filmed Haley's grandmother, she was concerned that her granddaughter's ageing was overtaking her own. When she stays here, I look at her and I think, God, she's, as old, she's older than me. Her body is, is older than me. All aboard, please. All aboard. All aboard, thank you. This way. The treatment offers an opportunity to arrest Haley's ageing. But with the trials looming, her grandmother has understandable concerns. What's your expectations of this new drug? I'm very positive about it because it's not like they made a new medicine. The medicine is already there. They're using it for 20 years now, so they, they know the side effects of it. But they haven't used it in children before, have they? Yeah, they use it in children, but not children with progeria. They use it with children that have cancer, some kind of cure. My only concern is they're saying that you'll notice a difference within three days. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just think, how can their body cope with something that's going to happen to them in three days because that is so quick? I don't know. I mean, obviously we don't know all the ins and outs and I'm not a medical person, but it just worries me. And I'm so scared of her going over there and not coming back. No, I will think they will come back. And it will be better coming back than going over there. When they tell you it's progeria and the average age is 13, every birthday you say it's a year off, you can take a year off. Six years to go, five years to go, and you can't like that. But now it's possible that they get older, that they, that they will become 30 or or 35 or 40 years, so it really gives you a lot of hope, gives you good feeling. As the two families prepare to say goodbye, the mood is optimistic. They'll see each other again in a few weeks' time, when the drug trials begin. Amber is too young for now, but Haley and Mikil will try the treatment together. I think that looking forward to starting the treatment has taken away a lot of the um, worries and that because we are actually looking into the future about, you know, keeping her alive, basically, rather than thinking about when bad things are going to happen. <laughs> Everybody's excited about getting on this treatment and, and finding out, you know, what's going to happen. It's the evening before Haley flies to Boston. Family and friends have arranged a surprise farewell party. I just wanted family and friends to get together 
I mean, I've called it a good luck party, but I just wanted to make sure that family and friends saw her before she went, um, just in case something happens. Not that it's going to. Ready, jump. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The family will stay in Boston for five days. Haley will undergo intensive testing and monitoring before the first dose of the drug will be administered. We've got nothing to lose. I mean, the average age is 13, and Haley's almost 10, so we've got nothing to lose at the end of the day, but they're everything to lose. She's got no choice. Hopefully, it'll do something for her. Uh, like I say, wish her the best of luck. At the end of the day, it's their decision, and you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Um, and this is an opportunity, hopefully, um, to make her a little bit better. Anyway, thanks for everybody for coming, as I said, and um, uh, keep fingers crossed for us while we're over there. And, um, and uh, we'll do our best to uh, come back with some good news for everybody. And uh, if we do that, we'll have another party, I think, and the best idea, money. Perhaps she won't get any more older than me and you. <laughs> the drug trials are shrouded in secrecy. All the participants have signed a confidentiality agreement. So we have to leave Haley's story for now. Oh, see you, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. But with luck, when she is free to continue her story, she'll be bigger, stronger, and facing a brighter future. The new series of Extraordinary People continues next Wednesday at 9 with a 21-year-old man who had to have his legs amputated at birth, but this has not stopped him running, and very fast too.